From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. George Everson, Mr. Dollar. Oh, yes, Mr. Everson. I've been thinking. Uh, I could have been wrong last night. You mean about the newspaper picture of the bar in New Orleans? Yes, that man in the background of the picture, the way he sits, the way he holds his hands and his head, it, it's so like Tom James. Yeah, that's what you told me last night. Yes, but this morning... Well, you know, things always look different in the morning. After all, we can't see very much of his face in the picture. It, it might be just a wild goose chase. Well, I've been on plenty of them, believe me. But I've been thinking, too, Mr. Everson. Tom Chase embezzled $120,000 from your firm. New Orleans would be as good a place for him to hide as any. Besides which, his wife told me he was very fond of jazz, and there's certainly plenty of that down there. And you really think it might be a possibility? My plane leaves for New Orleans in an hour. <laughs> Tonight, and every weekday night, Bob Bailey in the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. <laughs> From Special Investigator Johnny Dollar, location New Orleans, Louisiana... To the Home Office, Universal Adjustment Bureau, Hartford, Connecticut. Assignment, the Phantom Chase Matter. Expense account continued. Item 5350, cab fare to the airport. George Everson was waiting for me at the passenger ramp. I'll tell you, Mr. Dollar, before I came out here to the airport, I called the insurance company you represent in this investigation. Oh? I told them if this trip to New Orleans did turn out to be just a wild goose chase, that I would assume your expenses. Oh, well, that's very considerate of you, Mr. Everson, but it isn't necessary. Now, an investigation's an investigation. My company's willing and anxious to exhaust all the possibilities. And from what you tell me, it's a good possibility that Tom Chase is hiding in New Orleans. Well, I hope so. Say, look, I've still got a minute or two before my plane loads. I want to make sure I've got all the facts straight. All right. Tom Chase was your junior partner. He began to specialize in those clients of yours who made long-term investments. Right. One of them decided to sell out suddenly, and you discovered there was a lot less in his account than there should have been. You ordered an audit and found that other accounts of Tom's had been juggled, too, to the tune of $120,000. Roughly. He was arrested but wouldn't talk. He got out on bail and jumped his bail and disappeared. Yes. All right. His wife, Lola, says that for some time before that, he was moody and tense. Well, uh, look, I didn't mention this to her, but I will tell you... Do you have any reason to think that Chase was interested in another woman? No, no reason at all. Good Lord, Mr. Dollar, with a wife like Lola, a man would be out of his mind to even think of anyone else. Well, I'm just mentioning a possibility, Mr. Everson. Yeah, I know, and I suppose that always is a possibility in embezzlement cases. But I certainly hope not in this one. The, the whole thing's been hard enough on Lola as it is. Yeah, did you tell her about the newspaper picture and that I'm going to New Orleans? No, I decided not to mention it to her for the present. I didn't want to get her hopes up. Although, heaven knows, she doesn't have much to hope for under the circumstances. Yeah. Oh, well, my plane's loading. Well, so long, Mr. Everson. Yes, best of luck, Mr. Dollar. I'll be waiting for word from you. Don't count on much. Oh, people have hit the jackpot on the first nickel. I know. But oftener than not, they turn up three lemons instead. Expense item six, $114, transportation and incidentals to New Orleans. I checked in at a hotel and headed for the quarter. It hadn't changed much. Maybe a little more neon here and there. But the same streets, the same latticework, the same noises. Then as I was walking along the sidewalk, something came hurtling down through the air at me. I jumped to one side. It was a basket at the end of a rope. A man from a little grocery store came out, put some food in the basket, and the lady in the upstairs window hauled it up again. <laughs> no, the quarter hadn't changed much. It was after dark when I located Ace's Castle, a bar that had been shown in the New York newspaper. There weren't many people inside. A few couples scattered around, a single or two at the bar, the bartender. And over in one corner, a small band making slow, sad music. I went over to the bar evening, sir. Hi. Scotch and soda, please. Okay. A little slow tonight, huh? It's early. It'll pick up. Here you are. Thanks. This is the bar that was in the New York newspaper picture, isn't it? 
Yes, sir. This is the place. That must have been good for business, huh? Tourists. This isn't a tourist spot. What kind of a spot is it? People from around the street here come in, have a drink or two, nurse their own private troubles or forget them, and listen to Pops. Pops? Pops Harker, the old man over there with the trumpet. Oh. Hey, he plays like he means it. He does. Do you mind taking a look at this newspaper picture? So what about it? Well, this guy in the background sitting at the bar. Yeah. Know him? Not particularly. What do you mean, not particularly? A lot of guys come in here. Should I know all of them? All right, here. Here's a front view of the man I'm looking for. Recognize him? Afraid not, sir. Afraid I can't help you. Ever hear the name Tom Chase? Chase? Not that I remember. Uh, This man in the newspaper picture, is his name Tom Chase? Well, uh, could be. I'm not sure. Well, if he's around the street somewhere, you'll probably run into him sooner or later. How do you figure? People on the street don't leave it much. Oh, world of its own, huh? I suppose. Sort of an upside-down world, but a world, I guess. Seems to be what they want. So you think if my friend Tom Chase is here on the street somewhere, he's liable to stay here? Most of them do. Then it looks like you're going to have a steady customer for a while. We can always use him. Why don't you go talk to Pops, the old boy playing the trumpet there? He's got quite a memory. Maybe he could help you. Thanks. I will. Pop was way off at Never Never Land. He looked as old as Africa. He wore dark glasses. And the horn he was blowing looked like he'd either found it or made it. (laughs) Real cool, Pops. Thank you, Daddy. Me and the boys were just warming up. That was a warm-up? Oh, it ain't what it used to be. We'll still hold up for a while, I guess. <laughs> I think it will. Yeah, you talk to that horn real pretty. <laughs> it went to horn talk back to Count's Daddy. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, maybe you can help me, Pops. You got troubles? In a way. I'm looking for somebody. Oh, lots of people got troubles, Daddy. No, that's not quite what I mean. It's a... Uh... Well, it's a fellow named Tom Chase. Ever hear the name around here? Chase? Yeah, there was a side man in Chicago once named Tom Chase. No. In the 20s it was. No, sorry, wrong, Chase. Uh, the one I'm looking for is under 40. Only Tom Chase I remember was the old one. You been around here much? One you looking for? Maybe. What kind of voice he got? Oh, I don't know. Why? I remember voices. If I heard his, maybe I'd remember it. Well, look, I can do better than that, Pops. I got a picture of him right here. That don't do me no good. Why not? I'm blind, Daddy. Basin Street, boys. I think I knew now why he could blow the kind of music he did. It had to make up for a lot of things. I guess it was the only way he could see. Item seven, two dollars, drinks for me. I sat there in Ace's castle for a couple of hours, waiting. Waiting for Tom Chase to show up, or for the guy who looked like him to show up, so I'd know for sure whether this was a wild goose chase. But nothing happened. A few people slowly drifted in and out. Mostly they huddled around Pops Harker, nursing their drinks and listening. It got to be midnight, and I just about decided to give up when a man with a face like a weasel slid into the chair across the table from me. Your name, Dollar? Johnny Dollar? That's right. Who are you? Freddie Quintana. So? So you should be glad to see me. Should I? Any particular reason, Quintana? Oh, the face. It's around the street that you're looking for somebody, Dollar. News travels fast. Yeah, when it's really interesting news like that. Well, what's so interesting about it? Whenever I smell dough, it is always interesting. Well, maybe your nose is too sensitive. Or too long. There was no mention of money. Look, I've been around, Dollar. Oh, I don't doubt that. Yeah, a lot of people who float around the street and the quarter don't want to be found. Oh. So a guy comes looking for somebody, it usually costs him a little money to find him. I see. And you're looking for a guy named Tom Chase. So? So, I think I got him pegged. Where is he? (laughs) Oh, not so fast, Dollar. Not so fast. First we talk money, hmm? You're wrong there, Freddie. What do you mean? First, we make sure you know what you're talking about. Now, look now, You look. I've bumped into a lot of characters like you. 
And more than a fair share of them were just trying to ace into a deal for a fast buck without I'll any... I'll tell you, I'll tell you, I got a guy paid. Just describe him. Yeah. Tall, good deal, probably a good-looking guy when he shaves, curly hair, brown eyes. How am I doing? Not bad, but I take a lot of convincing. Look, you looking for this guy, you just want to talk about it. I just want proof. Okay, I'll get proof. Bring him here, that'll be proof enough. You kidding? Hmm. It ain't that easy and you know it. This guy don't want to be found. I know that the minute I spot him. He's going under the name of Tom James. Tom James? Yeah, I'd ring a bell. Maybe. His full name is Thomas James Chase. He could be using the first two names as an alias. Sure. Yeah, it's a familiar pattern. Sure. Okay, Quintana, suppose you do give me some proof. What do you want? 500 bucks. Oh, that's a lot of money. I think you want Chase at all. Uh, I'd have to get an okay for my company. You could arrange it. Maybe, maybe. And that brings us back to the question of proof again. I'll be back in an hour, Dollar, with proof. Daddy. Yeah. Yeah, what is it, Pops? That man you was talking to. He's a bad one. Oh. I can tell from his voice, Daddy. Yeah, I know what you mean. You don't want to mess around with a bad one like that. Unfortunately, he could have something I need. Is that the reason? Oh, well, maybe not a good one, but it's part of my job. Maybe you got yourself the wrong kind of job then, Daddy. You know, Pops. Sometimes I think you're right. Hi, Dollar. Hello, Freddy. Right back on time. Yeah, yeah, with the goods, too. Yeah. Take a look. It's all crumpled up. What is it? Well, smooth it out. I think it's a letter he started writing and threw it away. Where'd you get it? I paid a little visit to his room when he was out. I fished it out of the wastebasket. Okay. Lola... When you get this, I'll be far away. Don't try to find me. It's better this way. I don't know how to explain, but ends there. Well, what you think? Is he your boy? I can tell you in about ten seconds. I fished the sample of Chase's handwriting out of my pocket and compared it to the half-finished letter. I'm no expert, but I didn't have to be. There was no doubt about it. It was Chase's handwriting. So it looked as though my trip was going to pay off after all. Tom Chase was right here in New Orleans. Now, here's our star to tell you about the next exciting episode of this story. There's a little game of chance called Dealer's Choice. Fine. Until the dealer gets dealt out the hard way. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. Written by Robert Reif, it is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Be sure to join us tomorrow night, same time and station, for the next exciting episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar, Roy Rowan speaking. <laughs>